this episode of the Coach and the Casual. We're back in Vegas. We got the one and only former UFC champ going for his second belt, Aljamain Sterling. This episode is brought to you by Bad Bet. Let's get into it right away. Dude, honestly, there's a couple of reasons why I'm really glad to to have you on the episode, uh, Aljamain. Is that we'd actually met before. I was talking a little bit off camera, but it was right. It was NBA Summer League. It was right after Volk's championship fight where he defended, and we were here at the Encore. And I went downstairs and I went and took a piss. And I was coming out, and then I saw you standing there, in, like by the ATM. And I was like, I walked past. And I kind of looked back at you, and I was like, Hey. Bro, you look just like Aljamain Sterling, <laughs> and you you were like, uh, "Thanks," and I was like, <laughs> and I started like to walk away. I was like, "Are you?" And you go, "Yeah." <laughs> I was like, oh, "Can we get a picture? We take one." But uh, how often do you get to fly under the radar? And and I'm sure you get noticed all the damn time. I mean, you're such an active fighter, dude. Uh, now I definitely get recognized a lot more, but um, for the most part, I I try to wear my hat. Sometimes I wear the shades. And uh, like a big old jacket, if I can, yeah, hell yeah. helps a little bit. Especially that cauliflower we, ear and beard, those kind yeah, of like. Yeah. <laughs> I do about ways. shaving it, but I don't know. Sometimes when you're trying to get somewhere, you're like, I, I just can't really get stopped right now. But outside of that, when it's like a chill day, I don't mind it. Dude, you know that's actually something I talk about with a lot of the fighters that we have on. Is that for your whole life? You just focus on fighting. You focus on getting your, your skills and, and working on this technique or that technique. Then once you come into the limelight, it's a whole different level of distractions, a whole new world for you. Once you did come into the limelight, and, and when do you really feel like that was? Was it coming into pewter? Was it before that a little bit? And how have you navigated that, continue to be able to focus on? Because you're still just a guy, but now you, everybody knows you. How have you been able to navigate it? The first time I noticed how things were starting to change was my uh was 2019 against Pedro Munoz after that fight um I was doing Airbnb at my house and I was house hacking two of my bedrooms and then one of the guys came over with the He's guest like, oh, shit, my house. he walked in he goes I know who you are <laughs> with a smile and this grin and I was just like I don't know if this is good. So, <laughs> Can't let people know my house. Yeah, so I stopped doing it. But yeah, after that day, true. I was like, okay, this is the last one. We're going to finish out the rest of these guests, and we are out of here um, until I get like a house that's completely separate or something yeah. like that. But that's when it started. And then after the San Hagen fight, it started to build a little bit more. And then the first Piotr fight, well, that was a lackluster performance. Yeah. So it was good, but in the, in the worst way. It right. was like, it was kind of like people recognize you, but they're like, I don't oh. even know if I really want to pitch with yeah. this guy. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, damn. Yeah. Like, you like, should know who I like, am, dude. Hey, it's all I'm good, the though. champion of the world, motherfucker. <laughs> but did you feel like that was kind of like, I don't know, like a lot of people did hate on you after that. Like, And, I mean, it's hard to describe what it's like to be in there, but how did you feel like people literally were mad that you didn't have an exciting fight? Well, I think it was exciting because I was getting my ass kicked yeah. for the majority yeah. of it. But it was the the fact that I won the belt by disqualification by my opponent's actions. I'm just like, I'm confused. How am I being blamed for what my opponent oh, did? Oh, yeah. Well, and it's like, I I don't know. I've, like, literally coached wrestling a lot of times. And, you know, these kids, you know, sometimes you get a slam and, you know, we get to end the match or something like that. Stay down. I'm Stay like, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> especially if it's like that. I mean, but – like, I mean, in that case, it's, like, kind of different because it's in front of the world, and people felt, I don't know, like, the gamble, you know, like, a lot of people that put money on it. Like, did you get people like, you lost me this, you yeah. mother? Yeah. I'll tell you what, I did bet on Pewter on that fight. You did? Yeah. You yeah. fuck, bro. <laughs> Damn, yeah, but I bet on, you know, no, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's, he's got to stop betting, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should get looking, people dude. to just fade any of my bets. I should sell my picks. But and I, and I want to talk about the second fight in a second. But set the record straight in that fight. I mean, that was uh, it was a tough fight for you the whole time. Did you feel like there was a path back? And after he drew that knee, because his corner was calling for the knee, it's their fault. A lot. I mean, he's in the heat of the action, and it's his fault for doing it. Do you were you really like you couldn't put two and two together after he hit you with that knee? No, nah, it, it was more like I just need to clear my head a little bit. I was definitely fucked up pretty yeah. good, but um. They told me I had time. I think I asked him how much time do I have, and he told me, 
or something like that. And I was like, like five I minutes, just, right? he asked me, can I continue? I'm like, yo, just like, give me some time to yeah. like recover. recover. Yeah. Yeah. Like I can't just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm a badass. Like, let me go right now. Like, this, yeah, yeah. Like, there's millions happening. of dollars on the line. You yeah. Know? yeah like, like me winning that fight changes my life. And of yeah. course yeah. I had a bad rehydration going into the fight. And it was 135, huh? 135, big, big which cut. is insane, bro. We weigh about the same weight. Just yeah, well, I now, can't believe that. But, I mean, I was pretty big still back then, but um, yeah, th- I just botched the rehydration. That was the first time I ever rehydrated just poorly. I didn't realize how much later I was fighting, and I didn't put nowhere near as much fuel because I, I didn't want to be too full. And I ate like these smallest breakfasts ever, and I was literally starving, like I was cutting weight, and. The way I felt, I, I, it was bad because I, I should have trusted that I could trust my coaches if I tell them the yeah. truth. But I was kind of like, man, if I tell them this, they might think I'm having a panic attack or something. Like, no, bro, I, like I just feel like shit right now. So I'm thinking first round, let me gas pedal him. If I could get another Corey Sanhagen finish, I came out with the flying knee. And then yeah. after that, I just dipped. And I was like, man, I could have probably just made it a boring fight. Yeah. But it was like, which way am I going to go? I can make it a boring fight. Or I could try to get him out of there, and then after that, just take my ass looking, my ass whipping like a man, and uh, yeah, I, I I just wasn't gonna quit on myself. I was like, yeah. man, this is the worst performance, but I'm gonna keep pushing forward, and if I could get like some Holly Holm, uh, Misha Tate moment, then this would be the greatest. Or even like a Cody Garbrandt last second or boom punch, yeah, like the other, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I've got a theory, and this is so, you know, I'm a casual fan. I've casual, ne- casual, never been a fighter. Bro. I can only, so I'll be honest, I've, I've talked a lot about this, but. Remember he asked you, do you watch prelims? Cause he yeah. Oh, no? Yeah, okay. prelims. Yeah. I've only said, I, I, I didn't even, I didn't like, even know there were prelims. At until. the fight party, showing up at four, he's like, what are you doing here? Like, Get out of here. What are you like, doing? the prelims are starting yeah. up. <laughs> he tries to get me to watch prelims. I'm like, dude, what, the, what are we doing here? It's the best fight, uh, man. But, you know. One of the big things for me as a casual fan, and, and this is what I've said a lot in today's UFC, is a lot of the guys that are dominating, they're from outside the country. They're they're just so focused on the fighting. A lot of a lot of guys from you know uh, the Caucasus Mountains, right? Yeah. You get a lot of Caucasus guys, but they don't have personality. Whereas guys like you, O'Malley, uh, these guys with personality. To be honest, I'll watch that because of the storylines. Don't you think that's so much more important for the sport? Don't you think once we get too many champions that don't talk shit or don't uh, defend themselves in the in the media, don't you think that takes away from the sport? I mean, I love watching your fight specifically because of all the shit talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I I like a good shit talk if you're even if you're decent at it. I think if you just even like just making fun of the guy. Yeah. It it gives you something more to kind of Build on. Yeah. Then versus just, I could go watch a fight anywhere. I could go outside and hang out in Las Vegas and probably catch a fight, you know? Yeah. But yeah. when there's like a little bit of animosity or a storyline behind it of why they're fighting, it's like, all right, this is cool. I want to see who's going to win. Yeah. yeah. That makes it exciting for sure. But I also don't mind the pure sport of it, where it's like there's some people that I, they, words don't need to be said. I but I'll say that's it. more guys that are, that are there for the pure sport. Is less of the population. There's more guys yeah, that are very there, true. which is That's important. True. Until there's more fans of the UFC outside the U.S. than inside, you need to have more. Well, it's stars even okay. Like that. Even for instance, we all just watched the Super Bowl. No one cares about football. All they cared about was Taylor Swift and uh, I would disagree Mike with you on that. I didn't I, care about the, the I I did that was the first uh, football game I watched all season because I <laughs> wanted to see the love post. story. And then when they kissed after the what, I was like, Yes, yeah, yes, know. there is real love in this world. <laughs> it, might, it might be fake, but I was there the same way I'm a casual football fan like that. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it's story storyline is I mean key. And to be honest, there's guys that are that feel genuine, guys like you. And I'm not trying to kiss ass here, but then there's guys like well, Henry. A little bit, there's know? guys like Henry, where it's just the the king of cringe, where it, just, it feels too manufactured. What do you see when you see guys that are manufacturing it too much? Do you, how do you get them to pull back? Ah, uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I I enjoy watching Henry fight. I just think he felt like he needed to do something that was gonna get the. I'm like, I don't even think your trash talk needs to even be that crazy. You could just say, like, oh, I'm going to fuck you up, and yeah. there ain't nothing you could do about it. And I think that could be as simple as it needs to be. Like, yeah, it might not be, like, a Conor McGregor yeah. accent and all kinds yeah. of other stuff, but I think that's, like, pretty straightforward because now you say that, the other person has to respond. and They're going to either say, like, okay, I'd like to see you try. Yeah. And yeah. Then it goes, you know, so maybe you have a little banter or maybe they say something back and now it escalates. What, what, would, you, uh, what would you think, like uh, – 
you know, and I've been saying this for a little bit, and I mean, I don't know if we're going to see it now that the WWE and the UFC. Yeah. What about like writers? I mean, sometimes some of this shit talking to me, I'm like, oh my God, please pay a writer. Like, you know, <laughs> some people can naturally do it, but like, how would that feel? Like if someone like, you know, Colby, sometimes you're like, dude, pay someone to come up with some clever things, you know? Yeah, and on that same note, uh, what about when it goes too far? Is there too far? Like when Colby's talking about Leon's dad being in hell? Yeah, that's dark. Yeah. Um, it's pretty dark. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's dark, man. And you saw him even when they had the face-offs and Leon looked like he was ready yeah. to put some hands on him. Like, yeah. I'm just playing. Like, I'm just, I was in character. I was in character. I'm sorry. I was yeah. in character. I was like, damn, bro. Like, I don't know. Like, even when you're saying that, you kind of almost, like, show your hand. Yeah, say it with your chest <laughs> if you're going to say it. Yeah, like, say it after, but I don't know. Like, at that point. He was point, like the Joker, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, at that point. You're married to the game at that point. You can't, yeah. you can't go back. It's hard. It's hard to yeah. go back after that. And this is, like, what I keep, like, saying to a lot of fighters, you know, Colby's always going to have to be Colby. But, like, WWE, for some reason, people don't hate their enemy in WWE. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they watch it and they – weren't a fan of The Rock or, like, The Rock was the bad guy to their storyline that they enjoyed. Later on, they'd be like, oh, Rock, I used to always root against you. I love you. Thanks for putting on these fights. But I feel like the UFC world's like, I fucking hate you, and I hope you yeah. die and your it's family dies. It's crazy, bro. It is crazy. Like, I didn't realize how toxic, like, how toxic <laughs> and how deep – like these fights cut people. I'm like, well, what did I do to you? I've never even seen you like before I'm in my life. <laughs> I'm just trying to make a living. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Dude, oh. Anik talked about that after uh, he picked uh, Sean to win the. He thought no, Sean he thought won. Shot won. He the thought fight. Strickland won the fight, and he said he almost walked away from it because people were just vitriolic towards him. They were just terrible. Bro, towards him. do you ever get on? You don't. You're not on Twitter. Are you on Twitter? Yeah. Like the Twitter the MMA community, or X, sorry, my bad, X. <laughs> the X community and MMA is just dark, right? Like Very. every everyone just wants to talk shit, take as many. And it's kind of weird. It's almost like I'm at a point where I'm like, I'm for some more editing or whatever you want. What do they call it with the media? Like the censoring? Censoring. No. I am, bro, because no. literally 99% of comments on there, they're not even funny. They're just that's, people like, okay. you got knocked out by Tony. I'm like, okay, yeah, I did. Yeah. You <laughs> that, know, like, I'll tell you, that's Ramsey's Middle Eastern roots kicking in saying more censor. Right? Yeah, more censor. We're Americans over <laughs> hey, here. Hey, brother, everything's censored, only Qurans <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, if you think, I mean, you should see my timeline <laughs> from my first Yan fight till after. And even, like, there was a, definitely a 180, but there were still people who were so pissed off. Because I, I ended up winning by split again, which is just crazy to me. Yeah, that's but wild. I thought you whooped his ass in the I, second. I thought I definitely yeah. won the second hands down. But, yeah, toxic, bro. Toxic. Like, talking about family, yeah. sisters, parents. I was like, damn. People, like, find pictures of your family and, like, yeah. will send it. Who's that like, one redheaded, uh, he's, on, he's on the announce team now, he's the redhead fighter? Oh, oh, Paul, Paul Feldman. Feldman. Some guy tweeted Feldman. at him like, uh, he oh, tweeted, I know and you're then Paul Feldman was like, you wouldn't say it to my face. He was like, well, yeah, that's why I'm doing it on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, like, fair enough. Yeah, that is true. But I enjoy, like, because I do like talking shit on Twitter. And so sometimes, or an X, which I don't mind, like, people talking shit, but then it's just not creative, you know? That's the problem. I'm like, Well, all they're looking to do is have their favorite, their fighter or this person have an interaction with them. Yeah. So they're saying something terrible just to see if you're like talking to them, like, oh, cool, this guy talked to me. But it, it, but if someone talks shit to me and it's clever on there and makes me laugh, I'm like, there's a like. That's a good one, you know? But I, th I think the hardest part, because I'm coming into this, I mean, we're 25 episodes in. I've been, I've been a UFC fan for since I was 10, 12 years old. My big... I still don't watch the prelims? No. no, just, no. I, I know, bro. He's not a fan. <laughs> you got to earn your way that's up. That's a very to get loose... my pay-per-view money, yeah. you got to earn your way up. Yeah, that's a loose way <laughs> fan. But uh, the thing is, I held all these UFC guys in, you know, I came in in the Brock Lesnar versus Frank Mir. I came in Anderson Chael. I like, that was my big introduction. So I've always held all these, you guys in like, you know, hero status. Then when I started meeting you guys, it's, the hard, it's been the hardest thing for me because I'm like, oh, this is just a guy. He's a super nice dude. Now I don't even want to watch him fight. I don't want to watch him get hit. Let's just pay this guy some money. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, it, is That's because you never fight, bro. I, we have to tell you this every time. Well, you know, it's, it's because I see red. I don't want to hurt yeah, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, seeing red is dangerous. Bro. Yeah, show us your punches. But do you show still? Us, I mean, show coming, your punches, coming please. into the, <laughs> coming into this now, do you ever still walk into the cage with a guy and be like, "Oh, damn, that's so and so," or are you over that? Is it just another guy to you now? 
Uh, I still get like that because now you're fighting like the guys you've watched coming up. I've been in the, with the UFC for 10 years now. What did I get signed? Damn, congratulations, bro. That's amazing. 2014, Congrats. man. That's an unheard of in the sport. Yeah. You know? So what was it? My debut was February 22nd, 2014. And I'm like, damn, I literally just made my 10-year anniversary with these guys. And it's just fascinating to see like the people I was watching, I'm now fighting. And yeah. then the people who were like the fathers of the division – I'm now fighting. I'm like that's this is crazy. Well, you're you're kind of that in that now role. I'm now I'm that. Yeah, yeah, you are. So that. it's weird because then I go to the PI and people see me and I'm like, why are you looking at me like this? Yeah. And then I yeah, realize I'm true. like, they they're coming up. They want a picture or they just want to shake my hand. I'm like, oh, I keep forgetting. Like I am now the yeah. old, the elder here. Yeah. Where I, I remember coming in, I was like the little guy coming up like. Oh my God, that's DC. Oh my God, yeah. that's Ronda yeah. Rousey. <laughs> Don't be a fanboy. Yeah, like, yeah like, that's I, so I'm true. still like that. So sometimes I forget that we are now those people um, taking over that place of even like those guys like DC who's now retired and things like that. Who's what? your favorite fighter then? Like you, you seem like a real fight fan. Yeah, like you love the and sport. It's fun. It's fun to be around a guy who's a fight fan. Yeah, too. I mean, yeah. I don't think all fighters are fight fans, right? It's weird to me when they're not. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know if you are, but <laughs> mm. it's, it's odd to me for I'm you to do. I'm this weirdly sport. obsessive over there. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I do this because I enjoy it, and I, yeah. it's fun. It's dangerous, but it's definitely fun. Yeah, it's like fun. you're not thinking like that. I'm like, like, how are you expecting to really get better or get to? I don't know. That's just the way I look at it. Well, you know, it's funny because, like, <clears throat> my wife sometimes will be like, literally, she's like, you are sick. Because I'll be like, <laughs> at, like, a fight with these guys, you know, coaching a fight on my phone, watching a UFC, watching, you know, one, whatever fights are on. I'm going back and forth between two. And she's just like, you're, you're sick in the head. And I was like, I'm just literally <laughs> obsessed with this sport. And I love fighters. You're one of my favorite fighters. I love wrestling. I love watching anyone that can, like, go out and do their will. But who would be, like, your... You're Mount Rushmore in MMA. Mount and Rushmore does it have to be? Does so it have hard. to be active, or does it just all time. all time? All time. I mean, I feel like Mighty Mouse has to be on there. Okay, the stuff he does. I'll is tell you why he doesn't insane. belong on there. He doesn't even belong on your list. Too small. Too small. We we can agree that small guys don't belong on any list. So Hudo barely over the height limit to be allowed on any list. <laughs> Personally. <laughs> <laughs> Do you he disagree? Thinks, okay, so listen. He can be uh, 125, 130. Even he's talked shit all the way up to 45 pounders. And he's like, well, I'm 220. I'm 240. That's 100 pounds, bro. <laughs> You're lying if you did. Listen. I fucking beat your ass all the time. Oh, you think you would gosh. learn, dude? <laughs> <laughs> listen, you were beating up on Sneeko, too. Yeah. And you saw what Strickland did to him. So that's, that's no accomplishment yeah. there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you can agree anything. I'll even because you fought at thirty five and I like you. I'll let thirty five be on that list. Anything below that, there's a reason we're getting rid <laughs> hey, of that. Hey, leave it. Let's listen to the list, okay? Because <laughs> you know you learn about someone. You like technicians. Oh, Oh, hundred percent. Mighty Mouse is one of the purists out there. I think him. Uh, I think it's hard to pass up GSP. Yes. Um, even though his era, I think, is a different time. You, I think you start to see that people were catching up to him with the GSP fight and uh, Condit. The Con Condit. Um, you start to see that the gap was closing. Like mm -hmm. people, And some of those fights, I thought he actually lost the Johnny Hendricks fight. Yeah. In my personal opinion, yeah. I thought he lost, respectfully. But um, he got the W, so that's all that yeah. matters. Um, John Jones, you I get, think because... You get one more after John. He's fought over... Errors of Dude, the sport. Yeah. He's my Which is insane. Yeah. Have you seen Who's John lately, he though? He ended. He's big. Bro. John like a beefy, bro. He ended, though, <laughs> the one of the greatest eras of light heavyweight ever in the history of UFC. And then yeah. he went through and ended the next era of those, and then now he's ending the last era of heavyweights, dude. <laughs> what do you think Which he is, is right now? 270? 280? He's looking yeah. chunky, dude. At least 260. Yeah, he's looking big. Yeah, 265. Can I get one more? One more. Don't blow it. And I'll tell you, there's only one correct answer. If you get this wrong, we might have to just scrap Can you guess what his is? Coyce Gracie? No, no, no. Hell no. He's a fanboy. <laughs> think about who the fanboy's favorite fighter. Oh, Valley? Don't tell me he's a fanboy. No, no. no. It's, a, it's a retired guy. One of the greatest Anderson to ever Silva? do. Yeah, Anderson Silva, oh. like, yeah. No, I wasn't going to say Connor. Oh, I thought you were going to say, say Connor. Connor. He's a Anderson Connor Silva, fan. those Chael fights is who I grew up watching. That, he was the greatest fighter to ever. He's doing his head movement on uh, when he did it in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Pissed yeah, off, yeah. Pissed off uh, Dana. You know, I greatest actually, though, fighter of all time. I would take uh, Anderson off the um, off my Mount Rashmore, and I would put Connor on. As much as everyone, like, you know, Connor, as much as he's a crazy person, he was a two- Freaking division champ. champ. champ yeah. I mean, the champ champ, the real time, at both at the real time. And 
not only is he a goat in fighting, he was in promotion. He's the goat. You know what I mean? No one's ever changed the sport. Change no one's sport. ever promoted a fight better than Conor McGregor in the history of fighting. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people hate that one, but that's why I actually I, love Connor. I love him because of his story. He went from a plumber and he knew it was going to happen. <clears throat> However, he's got to, he's got to fix some things up. To, to yeah, do I mean, current Connor's a different animal. Yeah, for sure. And I, he, yeah, he's a big dude right now. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, like I after Silva. He, like, but after Silva, he my beat, God. Uh, yeah. there's I mean, no denying that Anderson Silva is one of the most. Him and he gave the backstop for Chael to Chael was the original Connor. Yeah. And he gave the backstop for Chael to to be the heel because he just stayed above it, didn't say anything, and then whooped his ass. I think Tank Abbott was the original heel in the yeah. USA. Was he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Straight up bar fight. <laughs> yeah, wasn't he the original heel? He like care. they brought him in so Hoist is like he beat the big scary guy or something. Yeah. It, but for me, <coughs> Chaelson was always interesting because his style of trash talk was like it was like poetry. It was like, smart. Yeah. how are you coming up with this? One, how are you staying in character? Two, <laughs> and how are you memorizing all of this? Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's no paper in front of him. He's just off the top of his head. I'm like, dude, how much time did you spend trying yeah. to get this right in the heat of the moment where <laughs> at the press conference, like, when I think about that, I'm like, man, that is actually super. That's more impressive than him. Actually and that got him fights. into more fights. It's like yeah, it's like yeah. Tito said. His mouth got him into more fights than his skills. And he said, "The only one yeah. who ever made money with his mouth is your ex-wife." <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. That's so good, dude. You know, one thing though, like I Chael, <laughs> I mean, I fought in a similar era as Chael. You know, like when I was fighting, he was yeah. It was when he was fighting Anderson and all that. Different levels, but different levels. Era. Yeah, yeah, same era. But uh, I got to like know him, and then he like knew my family because you know like. Back in the day, it'd always be the same, like, three months. You'd fight on the same card with people. Yeah. And I was somehow on the rotation with Chael. So he, like, knew my mom's name and, like, my dad or my brother's name. And I remember watching Chael walk into a room, and he knew absolutely everybody's name in that room, shook their hands, knew their jobs, like, if they were worked for the UFC, if they were one of the hotel guys. And I was like, dude, the dude is smart. Yeah. But even yeah. listen again. I'm not trying to uh, to jerk. Uh, let me uh, not use a certain. <laughs> I'm not trying to kiss up to you here. But what I'm saying is that I've been around a lot of fighters, and I wouldn't say most of them, but there's a good chunk of them who just they can't put stuff together. Yeah. Why do you feel that's a huge advantage for you that you're able to be quick with replies? You seem more put together. Why is that? When you and is it hard to? Be matched up against a guy who's not good at trash talking back because what you want is for him to return it. Yeah, definitely want him to return it because if they can't and they're, or they're not as efficient or proficient, it, you kind of get them flustered a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and then on top of that, I think it shows in their performances sometimes. Yeah. Or sometimes they just actually perform better and they might kick your ass. So yeah. <laughs> you got you to be careful with that one. Yeah. But I, I think it's the Long Island thing, man. I, we grew up kind of just talking shit talking with each other each all other. Exactly. the time. Like you and your boys just... Talking shit nonstop, playing video games, talking shit in the classroom, talking shit, texting each other, talking shit. I'm just like, dude, can we just like say something nice to each other? <laughs> yeah, no way. Like, it's like your boys. Today, it's buddy. like your boys. You tag the most shit to each other's face, then behind his back, you're like, that's the coolest guy. If Kyle yeah. said something <laughs> nice to me, I'd be like, are you dying? Are you okay? <laughs> like, are you okay? I sent him a text like, hey man, I love you. He's like, oh man, don't kill yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, put the gun down, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about uh, this last go around? It was tough. I, we've been feeling for our boy Ian Gary, and this last press conference, he's almost started crying. Is it hard to watch a guy, like, break down like that? For me, I was like, oh, I don't even want to watch this anymore. Yeah, it was weird because I felt like he's in a weird spot, and I know what that feels like. <laughs> well, I don't a, think you know a, what his spot feels to like. A, to he's extent. really done himself in. <laughs> yeah. But it, it started with the, the way he promotes, like, he bashes guys, which is cool. But then the, the tangent he went off on Neil Magny for, and I think Neil Magny stepped up on short notice. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, wasn't this guy stepping in on short notice and you crushed him at the press conference over something that was clearly a joke and you took it out of context. And yeah. I like Ian. Yeah. But I was just like, I don't know if that was the avenue I would have taken respectfully. Like, I just don't think that was a good projection of him and his character. And I think it got people kind of against him a little bit. Of course he went out there, he literally whooped his ass. So and like Neil's like helped. one of those people that everyone loves, you know, it's yeah. like when you talk shit on him, everyone's like, uh, oh, don't do that. Don't do it, yeah. You know? So it was a little weird Yeah. or odd. I should say a little personal too. A little personal. Cause too personal. you're attacking his, I think that something actually happened with like, yeah, it's like family. child services or something. Yeah. I was like, damn bro. Like I was going through a separation, you yeah. know, like it's like, dude, don't get into something yeah. personal. Wow. Like. So then, now that happened, and then the Jeff Neal fight, and then uh, 
the thing with the wag, and I was just like, all right, this is getting crazy. Because <laughs> now he's on the other side of it, and it's like, well, now you got to try to navigate that. Now people are talking about your kids. They're talking about your nutritionist, who's <laughs> actually your, your wife's, wife's ex-husband. <laughs> and I'm just like, bro, you of all people should just like stay. Yeah. You're like, you don't throw stones when you live in a glass, glass house. house. You yeah. can't do certain <laughs> things. Because now you're the butt of the joke, and I think Strickland kind of – Lame. Took that and ran with it. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. kind of a bully, man. But yeah, yeah. What do you think about him? He's a little bully sometimes. Yeah, or like... he he tries to be funny about it. Well, yeah. Sometimes he is, and sometimes I'm just like, damn, bro, you're just a bully. That's <laughs> kind of harsh. Yeah. yeah. Did you see what he did to Sneeko? Yeah. So we had been. Did he out deserve with, it. Uh, well, so we had been out with Sneeko. We we had been out with Sneeko in Miami two three weeks earlier, right? Yeah. And here's what I'll say. I actually really like Sneeko. He's a good kid. Uh, he's grown up in a world on camera, and so it's it's a much different upbringing than any of us had. But the thing is, Ramsey was training with him, and Ramsey will train with me. And the thing is, I know Ramsey's going easy, right? He'll have me, and he'll be giving me mother's milk. I'll be, I'm like, Ugh. and he'll be <laughs> he'll be talking to somebody like next, but hey, can you go get that thing for me? He's chilling. <laughs> but I told him, I was like, hey, Sneeko's getting involved with some of these people. You need to give him a hard round so he knows what it feels like. But he, the time just didn't come up. Ramsey didn't give him a hard round. And like honestly, like I mean, I didn't. He's feel new. I was giving him. You know, a hard round for a new guy. I'm not gonna hit him in the head, right? But the, like, but my know? point was, he's coming in. He's he's on the scene where he's gonna run into somebody who's not gonna be nice to him. So it would be good for him to know. Uh oh, that's what that feels like. I better be careful. Yeah. So then when he's in there with Strickland, Strickland just uh, first of all, I thought that was uncool because when guys go off too hard on me in the gym, I'm super new. I'm like, hey, can you not do that shit anymore? But <laughs> two, like, what what was your opinion on? Do you think Strickland did too much, or do you think he deserved it? See, I don't know the premise of everything in the sense of was Sneeko asking for it? Was he talking shit? No, he wasn't talking no, shit. He just a, wanted to aspire. He's actually a, uh, the kind of kid that he's not He's not good. He's super new. But he's very willing to be like, all right, let's do it. And okay. so when you're okay. – I feel like when you're doing that, you're trusting the other person who's super experienced to uh, take care of you a little bit. Yeah. So – Strickland was doing like a countdown. It was like, you're about to feel a lot seconds. of pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> in like a minute or 30 seconds, whatever it was. And then he just unleashed a fury on him. I, I mean, I thought it was maybe deserved because of what possibly happened beforehand. But I didn't know like the whole backstory. I just knew he showed up at the PI. And then. Well, like, I know uh, so Jake was with Sneeko. And, yeah, you know, he Jake's, brought him over. Yeah, and Jake was telling Sneeko, like, hey, bro. And we told him too. <clears throat> he was telling us he was going to Vegas. And I was like, Hey, just be careful if you spar with Strickland, you know, uh, be careful who you spar with. I was like, you know, everyone's not going to be as nice as me. Like, I'm a coach, so I have no, like, you know, urge yeah. to hurt you. And then so he was like that. And then Jake told him, like, dude, Strickland's going to take your head off. And then we told him, and he still was like, I just want to do it. I want to feel what it feels like to spar. <laughs> and then afterwards, everyone else was pissed. And you know, the first thing he said, he goes, why'd you guys throw in the towel? Yeah. And then he was like, I text him, like, bro, you okay? He's like... No, I'm great. I'm not, he's, he's got like, a heart, dude. He's like, I got a headache, but I feel great. And I was like, Yeah, you're not great. You're not <laughs> great. I mean, you got a concussion, <laughs> though. <laughs> don't go to sleep tonight. But yeah. like, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I've I've become kind of like, in because I I see the benefit of someone that is like him that's never experienced that hard hit, and then afterwards you feel alive. You know what I mean? After a hard oh, spot, yeah, for you sure. Know what you're mean? definitely like, that was fucking crazy. Yeah, it's like it, it is in a a thrill type of. I don't know if you if you're into that type of stuff, it, it does make you feel a little bit alive. But to answer your question, it definitely wasn't cool. Sean did not need to team up like that. Maybe to the body, yeah, yeah, you know, a lot of rearrange the the organs a little bit. But what's your drop what's your, him with a liver shot? Yeah. Just you know what I mean. That's like if I want to drop someone, I'm gonna go to the body. I'm not yeah. gonna go to the head. You know. Here's my problem. So I we talked with Jay Shields, and. Uh, I was, the thing is, obviously, I joke around a lot, right? I, you know, I, I'm that same style. I grew up just messing with my homies, so I kind of just get like that sense of familiarity soon. And Jake was warning me. He was like, "Hey, listen, there's some guys that that's not okay to do with." And he said specifically, if you do that with Sean, he's gonna whoop your ass. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you feel there's some guys? Don't. Uh, do you feel there's some guys? It, why do you feel that there's such a quick trigger that you can't even joke around with them? Whereas you grew up, it's kind of cool to just 
talk shit pretty And, early. like, even he was talking shit earlier about small guys, and you just laugh at him compared to, yeah, like... Yeah, because you know... Some you know, guys are like... You know, I don't mean any malice, right? right? But but some guys, they take offense... Do you think it's... Some guys have had some hard upbringings, and so they have to kind of protect themselves quick, or what do you think? Yeah, that too. And I, I think some people just even... When those people were making fun of them growing up, I think they were just more quicker to Fight. handle that situation yeah. right then and right there, where they kind of just take that into their adulthood. But, man, I have grew up with... Like eight brothers and sisters, I'm like a family of like 20 plus siblings. Oh, so we've we've had yeah. some battle royales, same thing, talking shit to each other 24 seven. Yeah. So you kind of learn how to have, you kind of learn how to ha- like just have thick skin, how to take it, how to dish it, and um, you can't just go and cry about it. So you kind of have to learn how to defend yourself. Yeah. And that, I think that's one of the cooler things about it. But for some people, man, like some countries, like Dagestan, for for example. Those guys don't joke around like that. Maybe with each other. Yeah. But if you're going to just go up to them and think you're going to just become one of the bros, like in, in a five minute or the very first introduction, that's going to be a problem. Well, because I saw DC messing with uh, Islam and Khabib saying, yeah. My boys went over there and whooped your guys' asses. And uh, even like DC's got all the respect in the world. Islam was like, What? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? It's almost like Islam's going to fight DC, but it would be a problem for him. Yeah. Okay. You know, I've kind of noticed, though, like, with those, uh, a lot of those Russians and Dagestans when I was fighting with a bunch of them on PFL, <clears throat> you know, because I have Ali connection, they started to get, like, you know, cool with me and stuff like that. And then we were asking them, like, hey, can we come out and train with you? And he looks at me in the eye when he goes, you come for three days. We watch you train and decide if you can stay. And we're like, what happens if you decide if we can't? They're like... You go home. I'm like, in a <laughs> hole? Like, geez, man. I was like, dude, just the way they are is so hardcore. It's just like a different existence. You yeah. know? Dude, it's funny. In, yeah, uh, I, I think I've told the story before, but in South Africa, so I lived in South Africa for two years, right? And uh, I had this South African companion. He was Kosa, right? And in he was there, what? Kosa, so X O. Wow. <laughs> X-H-O-S-A I actually, thought it was like a glitch it was, yeah. like, it was like what is that Wait say it again It's Xhosa It's X-H-O-S-A In uh, like if you're Have you ever seen Black Panther Yeah That's the language they're speaking Is Xhosa right um, Dang and, you can do that pretty good yeah, bro Yeah well I lived over there For a long time Did you speak the language uh, No I spoke no. Uh, Setswana Which was the country to the north But um, anyway He would always talk shit to me That's the tribe he's from And he was like Yeah when He would make fun of me He said you were circumcised At the hospital right And the first time he said it I was like yeah, <laughs> right. And we'll so, see circumcised. But in his tribe, right, when they're 12 years old, they go up to the mountain, they get them drunk, and they circumcise them with a rock. Oh and then my. they teach them how to fight, right? And so he's making fun of me. I'm like, bro, I don't want any of that. But these <laughs> guys come from, like, these these things where we're like, holy shit, what? Wow. So that it, it just comes from, like, a much, like, there's so many, the, the culture. Is the rock like, sharp? Sharp. Sharp rock. Like, do they sharpen a rock? Yeah. And then, and, they, then, and they teach them how to fight, and they also teach them how to, like, treat like women. Like, do you do it to yourself, or is there a dude No, there? there's, an, like, there's an elder who scrapes it off him. Oh. Uh, I didn't watch, but he explained it pretty clearly to me. <laughs> oh that just God. feels <laughs> so terrible. So painful. Imagine 12 years old. But uh, that's what I'm saying, is you're talking about these guys, like, coming from this culture, or, like, where am I going to go home in a hole? It's like... It's hard for me, and I think a lot of us over here, to even understand how bad it can be, or I won't say bad, what cultures are like in different places. Is it tough for you, having grown up in, in the U.S., to fight some of these guys who have grown up in these very hard circumstances? But you were born in Jamaica, right? No, I was born oh, in New you're York, born in the oh, okay. Long Island, New York, and then my, my parents are from Jamaica. Oh, they're your first so generation? First generation, yeah. But no, I, me too, bro. I know what you mean, gotcha. man. I, first generation, <laughs> you get all the benefits of here and all that. Uh, yeah. First generation, you know, hard work is. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> but it, it's very different, man. I, I think people have to respect where other people come from. That's the only thing. Like sometimes I, f- I do feel like that region of the world that come over here and they think we're supposed to like change everything for their ways. Yeah. When I go to their place or anything like I go to another country, I convert my rules to their rules because and it's fun to do part of their culture yeah. when in rome yeah yeah i'm not saying to change your religion or anything oh, yeah. but sometimes i think they think that Respect we're supposed their to culture yeah. yeah i'm like well we do things like this here yeah <laughs> like we go hard this is just our style of the way we live our lives so that's like the only type of cultural difference that i find sometimes that could be a little clashing um with even for my myself friends from over there you know like they're muslim yeah and the just i you know my family's muslim my dad's muslim i'm muslim i grew up you know not but like I'm like a Muslim, like you're a Catholic, I guess. In the yeah, yeah, in, you know what I mean. And like I, you know, we didn't grow up 
very like you know uh, intense or anything or like dogmatic. Devout, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, when they come over and they're just so much more. Doc I'm like, it's really. I'm like, I grew up in a different environment. I've been around different things. I have different vices to you know control with what my traumas are like yeah and i watched my family do this you know what i mean it's just so much just like different just different well you know? in on that same band you've had less experience with fighting with with the dagestans but you have fought the russians you fought pewter yep. right what was the and i wanted to get to that second fight because that had to be the greatest relief in the world for you to beat him that second oh, yeah. time because then it proves hey this is actually my belt right yes what was that experience like what was it like fighting pewter and what was it like getting getting the belt for real this time uh i mean it was it was relieving for sure um one of the things that really made me sour about the fans um i've come to turn around to them again like before i was super open to them and then after the first yawn fight how i saw how everyone quickly just turned on me i was like the way i grew up i'm very protective of my personal space like yeah. so when you come up to me i don't know what kind of energy you're presenting so i have to be on guard Went on edge every time I go out to public because I don't know if you hate me. I don't yeah. know if you lost money on me and you're going to yeah. be like, yeah. <laughs> I don't walk around with security guards. And like you said, I'm not the biggest guy. I'm yeah. not John Jones. Yeah. You know, so. You're not Kyle Deaver. <laughs> I'm not Kyle Deaver either, you know? So I, I got to. no one knows who you are. <laughs> yeah. I got to be a little bit more protective of yeah, myself. Yeah. But after that fight, dude, the, the 180 at the hotel from when I got there, no one really wanted a picture. And then after the fire, everyone, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you mother, yeah. I can't believe you guys are like this. So yeah. fickle. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I took like maybe five pictures and I was like, I told the security guard, like, dude, respectfully, I appreciate this because they, you know, they tune in to Feels watch good, regardless. Yeah. But I don't have the energy for this right now to pretend that I'm happy to or see them I'm cool because these guys who were just, treating, who were like just treating me like, the lowest scum of the earth, as if I cheated. I'm like, how did I cheat? Yeah. Yeah. But winning, man, that was such a big relief because I never envisioned me winning the belt by disqualification. I don't think anyone ever yeah, thinks they're going to win by disqualification. So to win it, um, man, it was such a big relief, and it was like the biggest redemption story, I think. Well, it was interesting this, you know, with the Johnny fight, like no one said anything. Remember when Johnny got need? Uh, out in by Abu Dhabi. Uh, on Clive, on Clive, out. Oh, Johnny Walker. Yeah, Johnny yeah, Walker. The yeah, other. But that wasn't for a championship. Yeah, but was, still, but like DQ. people were like, you know, like it wasn't that big of a deal. I felt like, but you know, yours was for a. Belt. I think the big problem was that you were losing before that, right? Yeah. And so then you got. But it was, I, I, one of the judges had me winning. Yeah. yeah. Going it would have been a split decision it, going into the four round. So if he had lost a point or two points because it was an intention, intent, intentional. Need. Yeah, yeah, it, it should have been like, a point or two. Yeah. Yeah. But regardless of the fact, but yeah, because I was but on my me, way to losing the way and that I actually, it looked. Well, I want to go down this route a little bit because uh, we're kind of talking about it. You were saying, you know, you get all this hate, but even like Dana, for some reason, what is it? Like, why do you guys not get along? And even tell like, you know, the story about him pulling your tickets at the fight. I don't think Dana did that personally. Yeah, right? it was think, it was people handling the venue. I don't think Dana was like, "Oh, Al just no, sitting there." No, he personally decides he didn't pull the his ticket though. No, I, I I've night. been told that he signs off on who gets the yes. tickets. He personally decides the seating chart. Yeah. every single fight. But I do think it was on the ticket staff to actually relay the information that Trump was coming, so my tickets were now being okay. pulled, now, let, which let, they did not do. Let's give some context. So we're talking about the night that Colby fought Leon. Yes. Uh, and you had tickets, uh, you were, and uh, then Trump was coming, they cleared out a bunch of seats behind yeah. him. And well, you they, got for bumped. his security, too, yes. right? <laughs> and then you got your tickets pulled, and you literally were at the venue Trying to get your tickets, and they're yeah. like, oh, we don't have tickets for you. So I was in my Uber, and I was texting them, the the lady, and uh, she was like, I'm so sorry. Um, there's no more tickets. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, I'm literally <laughs> outside. I thought you, you know, it would have been cool if you guys told me. It's like, now I'm stuck out here with the fans. It's kind of, <laughs> yeah. like, it's cool, but it's not cool. No, it's, it's not cool. cool. It's, it's not a good place to be. I mean, you're getting, especially on a fight night, they all know who you are. Yeah. yeah. That's the only part where it's like. Shit. I'm yeah. like, I'm walking by, then one person recognizes me, then I'm like, now I'm stuck here with my girl. It's cold outside. For hours. And I'm like, this is not good. So we went And that's else. the thing, like, people don't realize, like, you know, as a fighter, you know, most of the time you can walk down the street and you might, one person might be like, oh, dude, what's up, bro? Or like, you know, even like a Conor McGregor, he's a different level, but like John Jones and they'll see him. But you go to a fight night, everybody's a fan. Yeah. People, will <laughs> they want pictures because they want to, 
put it on their Instagram, you know, and they will yeah. hoard you. And and that's what Ramsey's heard from uh, other fighters. Bigger fighters. Yeah, yeah. He's never actually experienced that himself. <laughs> what, one time I took a picture with one fan. Yeah. <laughs> with my mom. Yeah. <laughs> but to be fair, just so I make sure I say this, Hunter did call me and ask me what happened. And I told him I was already at the uh, the new, the other venue, um, Flankers, to watch the fight. And um, he said, next time, just call him or whatnot. And I was like, dude, like, you're busy. I'm not trying to badger you. I'm not trying to seem like I'm being an asshole. But at the same time, like, that actually was not cool. Like, That's not I cool, should have gotten a heads up. Like, Especially because you're a 10-year guy. I mean, yeah. this is you, – you've built a lot of what the UFC is. Yeah. So I'm like – I'm not, and I told him, I was like, I'm not trying to get nobody in trouble. But someone working should have relayed the message before we got all dressed and came to this yeah. venue. Yeah. But, why, uh, why do you think there has been, though, the animosity between you and Dana? Like, I mean, there uh, was the fact that you wouldn't put the belt on you. Remember that? Like, right? Like, are he, what, which one was that? Wasn't like uh, the second one he didn't like? Or was he that, wouldn't put the belt on uh, on Nganu. On Nganu? Oh, yeah. Nganu Mike Maynard did that. Oh, um, I thought, no, maybe I was wrong. I thought it was one of your fights. He was like, no. didn't put mm, the belt on. I think he put it on every single time. Okay. But well, I know the first young fight, I was like, maybe we asked this question. Maybe Ramsey's maybe seen some. Do you feel like there's animosity or, or not really with Dana? I, I feel like we've butted heads on um, a couple of things. You know, when I first came in, I was talking about fighter pay a lot and whatnot. I was a f freaking gym teacher in Long Island. We make $56,000 starting for the year. Yeah. Come fresh out of college. And I got offers right out of the gate kind of a thing. Um, I could have worked my way up. I probably wouldn't have gotten a full-time position, but I would have gotten all my benefits and everything. And I would have made my one of my teachers, former teachers – Makes about 120 plus a year. Nice. So that's a pretty good living and doesn't have as to get, a physical. Doesn't have to get kicked in the head. Summer's off. Doesn't have yeah. to do any of that stuff and get to have fun and bullshit with the kids and teach them as you know. No them stress. No stress. It's government pay, as they say in uh, um, Australia. Fed income. Yeah. That's a guarantee. Like you gonna be there? Fed income. Pretty much. <laughs> and once you get your tenure, you're like, good luck trying to get me out of here. Yeah. So it was like that whole thing, and I voiced my opinion in the media a couple times, and I was like, dude. I, the amount of money I made because I haven't been able to fight that often, and before I'm used to fighting five times in a year on the regional circuit, and then I go to fighting once or twice a year, I'm like, bro, this is actually bullshit. Yeah. Like, I, I came here thinking this is my golden ticket, and I'm being, like, shelved. And sure, I don't know yeah. if it was intentional, but then I start to learn, like, it's, sometimes it's hard to get you fights based on whatever they're saying, which could be true, it could be bullshit. And uh, I think it kind of started from there. But then every time we talk in person, like it's just one on one, bro. He's the nicest guy. Yeah, the look. nicest guy. Family talk, all these things, and like, do this. Make sure you don't do that. Make sure you're being careful with this. This could suck you dry and things like that. So that actually sounds pretty good. Getting yeah. sucked dry. <laughs> oh. I mean, there's nothing wrong <laughs> well, with that. <laughs> every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> so like, I and I wonder like, do you do you feel like it's just like uh, old um, mafia mentality? Because like. You say one thing, and then it's kind of like from there on, like kid it could, want, it, kid doesn't want to fight. It could, yeah. be, it could be that. But then I, I also said this, and I voiced this to Hunter. I was like, dude, I, I mean, I don't mind sitting down and having another conversation with Dana. My thing is, and I've said this like respectfully, like why does he build everybody else up when I do everything that he's asked me to do? Every time they wanted me to fight, I fought every single time, even when I was in pain, fucked up. I showed up, made the way. Um, I tried to promote the car. Even after the first Jan fight, I became the heel, mm -hmm. and I did whatever I could to promote the fight, like talking shit back and whatever. I'm the real champ. I don't care. I got the belt, so come fucking take it. It's like shit like that. And I'm like, dude, I, I'm helping the company. Mm -hmm. So why can't I get a little bit of love and just like, okay, he always asks us, he always does what we ask of him. So we just got to talk with him and make sure we get on the same page instead of saying, uh, I don't know what he's doing. He can't get out of his own way. Like, it, that makes me look bad because yeah. now your cult following literally just parrots everything you say. Like, you don't want to fight. I'm like, guy, check my record. I, I fought fight, yeah. the yeah, that's most what everyone out of says everybody. About you, what yeah. are you talking about? He doesn't want to fight. And he's like, you have the most fights. That's like, like active, active as a champion. So I'm like, I don't know. And that, and that can be like, I can see that being frustrating because there is the fact that you do need the UFC push. Yeah, of Like, course. if you want to be like a multi million, well, and a which we all do. You need when you fight, you need yeah, you need the, the push promotion. by the promotion. And as much as it sucks, is like who they decide to push is going to be like, even if they're not the champ, they're like, you know, the, you know, Chamais. Like, everyone's like, oh, I'm so scared to fight, you know, Hamza. Hamza because he's so. 
good, but then like he barely beats Usman on two weeks, and people are like, well, you know, he's just untouchable just because that's the story. Yeah. Let me ask this, and I want to get to a couple of your uh, fights after that. One of the questions, though, and I, I, I liked – uh, Mike Perry, I asked him one time, and he's he's happy to see all of his. He hates all of his opponents afterwards. I don't think a afterwards? lot of guys. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. I hope that guy dies. You yeah, know? Yeah. But you know, he's just a savage. What? But yeah. but let me ask you a question. I was like, I want him to win, man. Like, look <laughs> let me ask you a question. Like with the and I'll, then we'll ask about your other fights afterwards. But with the pewter thing, after you beat him, he fell off a ledge. He was gone. I mean, he was the animal, and then he's just. I mean, he's had a couple fights after, but he's never. Reached he's had those. the worst luck though in his defense. But let me ask this. Is it kind of cool to see it happen to him because of you having you taking that knee, <laughs> or are you like, oh, I hate to see it happen to a guy. You know, you do want to see your f- former opponents win because it makes your win age a little bit more. Better. Yeah. Um, I mean, he lost a close one to to O'Malley, which you know I kind of gone back and forth on that one. Who actually won that fight? Me I think too. Yeah. Anyone that's a draw, that fight could be as close as to a draw as possible. And then you got the fight with Marab. He just got. I mean, he just got marauded. It's like, yeah. that's just what Marab does. And, um, did it to Cejudo the other day. That was wild. Yeah. So, <laughs> but he, you know, did you, wasn't a he, fluke. he gave you, he gave you months and months of, of, Grief from fans because of that knee. Yeah. Does it feel a little good to see him get some comeuppance? I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, Come on, Joe. I'm not like that, man. I, I don't know. I'm just like, whatever happens, happens. Like, yeah. What is for you is for you. What's for me is for me. You're a better man than me. I yeah, like you're it. a bitter yeah. bitch, dude. <laughs> okay, let's talk Dillashaw. Was uh, the Dillashaw fight, you knocked, you knocked, not, no. TKO. 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 Was that the one that his arm was popping yeah. out? Yeah. Apparently, so, it came out in like April. I'm like, Okay, so if it came out in April, why the fuck did you pull out the fight? I was mad about that one. Did it you off? Because it pissed off, obviously, a lot of betters. I'm I'm a filthy degenerate better. I didn't even bet on that fight. But did it make you mad as an opponent that he didn't disclose that? No, I mean, I don't think you're supposed to disclose your injuries. We all go and banged up. Like, I had my own stuff going on, but... That's a pretty significant one. I mean, I've had my labrum torn, and I fought all... What was it? When did I get my surgery? All my first seven pro fights but of course that was a regional circuit but yeah. i fought like that my shoulder came out a ton in practice and i got through it but you should know your limitations like if he legitimately thought in his head he was going to beat me yeah. with one arm <laughs> that guy's delusion was fun yeah, yeah i mean can yeah, we yeah. just be honest about yeah. that like and i get like what what do you think was going to happen he was going to throw a magical head kick and catch me with I, I'm, I don't know i don't know what his game plan was yeah but i'm like bro that one is on you. Yeah. Like, I hurt my wrist one time, and I talked to my manager at the time back then that I had. And uh, he's like, brother, just pull out. It's not worth it. I'm like, you sure? I think I could still wrestle him and still win the fight. He was like, no, it's not worth it. Don't take the risk. Okay, so I ended up pulling out of the fight. And I think that was, like, the last fight I pulled out with the injury. The, the, the Jan fight, the rematch, they scheduled that without actually talking to me first. That was just scheduled. I was like, brother. I heard you woke up to that. Is that true? Like, you woke up and, like. It, it was. Like your Twitter. It was blown not up. a conversation that we had. It was just kind of <laughs> just like, oh, you're fighting in Abu Dhabi. I'm like, bro, wait. You I, wake up a like, thousand X uh, notifications. Yeah. Like, what's going on? <laughs> that's what. I'm, that's like the stuff I talk about. Was just like, this is odd. Why do we do business like this? That happened to me one time. I'm like, I woke up in the morning and I had a million notifications and I was fighting. Uh, um, what's his name? Oh, I forget his name, but some dude. Yeah. Oh, James or not. What's his name? Uh, no, not Vic. Gross. No, he's from Alliance, and he ended up knocking me out. The switch off, right? Oh, Miles Jury? Jury. Yeah, yeah, Miles Jury. I don't know, because he was the only like switch stance guy. Yeah, yeah, no, no, because he caught me with that switch, switch overhand counter backwards. Which yeah. It was kind of wild. It was the same, almost same way how O'Malley got you. I was yeah. trying to break, literally. Go for it, yeah. Yeah, it was, I was just going in for that shot, and it was just like, boom, and there's like, boom, and you're like, Fuck! What happened? Yeah. <laughs> when yeah. Uh, when his arm comes out in the fight, do you realize him? Like, oh, this is gonna be a good night at the office, or what? No. So after the first round is when they told me, like, I your, think something's wrong. Told yeah, you? they was like, I think something's wrong with his shoulder. I go, which one? And they go, um, I'm not sure. I think the left. And I look, and I can't really see what's going on. But he came out, it was fine. And then it came out again in the second round, and I stopped in the middle. Cause I'm like, yeah. Fix your fucking shoulder, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> fix yourself. It's like Mr. Potato Head. I'm like looking at you like, I'm trying to give you as many chances to win this as you can. Because that's the last thing I want to say. It's like, oh, I attacked you when your shoulder came out. Yeah, it, yeah. Kind of like Korean Zombie when he fought um, 
Jose Aldo for the belt. Oh, yeah. His shoulder came out, and Kare um, Jose Aldo just started body kicking him to the shoulder. Yeah. I was like, that's an asshole, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, that guy gives no shits about anything. I think it's like growing up wrestling, because if that happened in a wrestling match, they would call injury time, give the kid, like, five minutes to, to pop like, his shoulder it, yeah. back on, and get back to wrestling. So that's what I'm like, fix your shoulder, then we could get back to it. So I literally stopped and waited in the fight. Like, Did you tell him, I, like, I pointed to it. I was like, oh, bro, fix your I shoulder. I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> fix your shoulder. Like, he's literally like this. I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah. I was going to, like, go pop it back in. Like, come, come on, Let's man. do this together. Because, <laughs> yeah. I, I, like I said, I fought like that. So I know what that feels like. But I also know my limitations. Like, all right, if I get extended, this arm's coming out. I took him down from the first kick he threw in the first round, and he posted on the bad arm. And I was like, bro, that, is, that was like the dumbest thing you could have done for a, a labrum uh, tear. Good, yeah, because yeah, I know. So I'm like, man, I don't care what you're saying. Like, against a guy who's lesser talent, you probably could have rolled the dice. But I was like, bro, bro you knew we were going to wrestle. Yeah. yeah. That's why he said And the you're fighting the best in the world. You're not fighting yeah. like a local circuit, you know? At the, uh, at the press conference, he was telling me, he was like, what are you going to do? Just wrestle me, to, wrestle, wrestle me to death. Uh, he's like, that's so fucking boring. That's so fucking boring. I was like, I was like, nah, we're gonna strike. Nah, we're gonna strike. Cause I, I, when he started saying that, it's getting in my head. I was like, oh, this guy thinks I'm a bitch. <laughs> so now I'm thinking in my head, like, all right, now nah, I gotta fight him. I gotta fight him, standing up. And then after he threw the kick, I, I legit wanted to strike with him. And then after he threw the kick, cause I, I was like, all right, we're yeah. gonna have a little machismo here. But he threw the kick, and we drilled it so much that it just fell on my, my arm. And I was like. All right, I'm just not gonna just not take it down. <laughs> yeah, and I like, get the freebie, right? Yeah. So <laughs> then, yeah. The shoulder went out, and you're shoulder like, and... ah man. Well, I wasn't mad, dude. I had you in a parlay, so I was like, <laughs> I bet <laughs> the odds would have been a lot worse if uh, everyone knew he was injured, right? Yeah, 100. You know? percent From what I heard, though, uh, TJ is a huge dick a lot of the time, so I bet a lot of people were happy to see it happen anyway. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't help that he definitely cheated intentionally. Yeah, the Epo stuff multiple yeah. times. But. I didn't have very good experiences with him on The Ultimate Fighter myself. I mean, no. like, I've known TJ a long time. Like, I've known him th through college because we were in the same uh, region. Like region, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we'd always see each other wrestling. Yeah. And then when he, like, kind of screwed me over, and I was just like, I remember, like, thinking in my head, like, why would you screw me over? Like, it was something so small and dumb but really big to me at the, you know, in the tournament. Yeah. And then – uh uh, Cody Garbrandt's un or uncle that he was, grew up with, who's awesome, Ray, the yeah, yeah. boxing coach, he pulls me aside and he's like, tells me an old Native American story about a snake going across the water. He's like, what does a snake do? They bite. <laughs> and I was like, all right, true. And after that, I was like, you know, he's just, I don't feel like he's like uh, malicious in the, t in the sense, but he just... He's very selfish. Yes. And I mean, this is a very selfish sport, but he's like very, very selfish. From what I've seen and from what I've heard, I mean, even training, like, I at least try to help my training partners as much as I can, but I don't try to, like, I'm not trying to separate you Bro, from the Bro, he just knocked and, out Juan. Did yeah, you see that? Juan I, Archuleta? I, I saw that, but I don't know if that was old or not. It seemed like it was, like, an old clip. Yeah, but you're like, but dude. But even still, it was just with the head kick. Yeah, bro, knocking out, uh, and I love Juan. Juan was one of my wrestling coaches on The Ultimate Fighter, and we trained together, and I'm like, and, like, you know, Juan loves TJ, and they're good friends, but I'm like, that, to me, wouldn't be a good friend, bro. Like, yeah. you know, if your training partner <laughs> regularly tries – like, you and Marab, I would say, you're good friends, right? Yeah, yeah, And you guys train. But would any of you ever try to knock the other one out? Like, Not, not like in that sense, especially if, like, either one of us gets a takedown. Neither one of us are trying to ground and pound each other's head through the canvas. Yeah, you grapple hard, I yeah. imagine. Like we We show the punches to either, like, the body or to the ground, just kind of let you know, like, brother, this would be bad. <laughs> yeah, and, like, but, when you're throwing a head kick, like, at our level, I feel like I have enough control to – put it on and, you know, pull it off. And it's just like, yeah. in those instances, I'm sure, I don't know, but like, I mean, dude, there's been a lot of stories about him hurting people and training partners and stuff like that as well. I heard the Chris Holdsworth one. Yeah. Kind of ended his career. Yeah. Paralyzed yeah. another kid. Okay, we're getting, we're getting close here. Uh, one thing I do want to talk is sugar. I'll tell you. Uh, I, I am an Aljo fan, believe me. But I'm also a sugar fan. You knew it. I'm dude. a sugar no. fan. Because no. the thing is, he's just so much personality, dude. He knocks on that one wait, guy. I, do you really think he has personality? I'm telling you. you welcome do. to the Sugar I, Show. Wait, wait. Another, left, another left one from off, Sugar? Off the mic and out of the camera or like. On camera, because on camera, I don't, I don't see I'm it. I'm telling you, he's got, the, kid, the kid's got style. I'll tell you. One thing, though, in watching your fight right with him is that he looked tall and leggy. You looked big. You looked thick on him. Did you feel like you were a lot stronger than him? And do you feel like he just he caught a puncher's chance on you, or how did it happen for you? 
you know, I don't want to discredit him because he's saying, oh, I called it. I knew I was going to get him frustrated and do that. That's exactly what he's saying that is now the thing that he knew was going to happen. I'm just like, all right, man. If that's what you're saying, I can't. I have no way of proving that to be true or not. Um, but I do think my frustrations with that fight is the I was rushed back into the fight. I think mentally I was not in the best state of mindset to make the best decision making. And uh, I think it showed. I mean, I think that was a very poor man's version of myself. And uh, even the first round, I the game plan was to fight him like that. Fight on the outside, the same way Pedro Munoz did. It was going to be a slow fight. If you watch O'Malley's fights, he's good. But he's good against the guys who are overly aggressive where mm -hmm. he can counter strike and that's where he shines and i always said that my watching his tape even from when he made his debut i was like this kid is good he's gonna be a problem especially if he can actually grapple um he's tall he's lanky he's rangy that's a hard guy to hit great footwork and i knew my keys to victory was just keep chopping down the legs attack the body when i could attack the body and eventually he's gonna feel like he's behind because i i think i can outpoint him and then i could get him maybe frustrated and i'd be the one to take him down versus him actually catching me off of frustration. He threw a beautiful, long um, rear leg push kick. I checked it. And normally I do this in the room. I check in. I come back to the switch stance. Came back southpaw. And when I threw the cross, it literally like just missed him. And he's floated backwards so beautifully. Like the step back. I like froze in amazement of how far he was able to clear the distance. So long. And I'm watching in slow motion. I'm like, I effed up. Bad. Oh. And I'm watching. Cause I see the punch come. I'm like, I can't believe I just made the one mistake I said not to make. And he got me with it. So I, I give him that. But I, I do think to to have me not train for literally a whole month and tell me I have to train in, in two months to get ready for another title fight after I just fought Henry Ciudo in a tough fight. Like, literally, you. I know if you've kicked before a time. Oh, yeah. Shins oh, yeah. were so swollen. Like, you could put fingerprints in my uh, shin bones, yeah. squeezing it, and you could see the mush. My feet would be fight. black and swollen. Bro, yeah. And I had people telling me, I, you know, I'm not trying to bash anybody, but I had people telling me, like, oh, just ice it up and ice bath, <laughs> and you'll be fine. Just, just do upper body stuff. I'm like, you guys think I got here by taking shortcuts? No. Like, you have to be mentally prepared. The weight cut, coming back down from about 175 pounds to get back down in three and a half months is not easy. That's literally yeah. going from camp, cutting weight, and... That's the hard thing is like for you it's as tough. a big, you know, uh, 35 er man cutting, how much weight were you cutting? Like 30 to 40 pounds? 30, like 35. But I was, that's why I was done with it after this. I was yeah. like, dude, if I win this, I'm done with this weight class. And if I don't win, I'm also probably done with this weight class. Unless they yeah. gave me a rematch. You don't get something inside of you that wants to go take that belt back? And doesn't it no, also? I, trust me, I do. But they said no. The UFC is straight up told me. There's no way we could give you the rematch. Mm. They know because they're like, yo, it's not good for business. Yeah. Well, yeah, because they want to get that. They want to get that that one off of Sean's record. They want yeah. him to fight uh, Cheeto. Cheeto because of that. Well, I think because Cheeto, it's more likely that Sean could win that and stay in that position mm -hmm. versus give a, me the rematch where it's like, well, we know you caught him, but can he actually catch him again? He's a money guy. Yeah. So I get it. Well, going into yeah, go, you'd go in. Go, going into the end here because we're we're wrapping here. Uh, Let's not even talk about your next fight. Let's talk about, well, actually, let's skip Ilya and Volk. I'm a huge Volk fan, as uh, we were talking about. Uh, five grand worth. Yeah, five <laughs> grand. I put five Gs on Volk, and to be honest, I'd, I'd do it again. Knowing the end result of the fight, knowing that Volk would lose, I would still put five grand on I'll take on Volk. that bet, all right. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, okay, I'll tell a funny story. Uh, maybe it's a little inappropriate, but me <laughs> and my wife were going to Pound Town, right? And I had five Gs on the fight. We're going. I look up from my wife, and Volk is knocked out. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I had to just keep pretending like I was enjoying myself with my <laughs> wife. I was like, I just had it to get to it. It was an awkward fight party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not going to lie. The fight <laughs> party got weird. Perhaps he wasn't there. <laughs> but uh, your next opponent, what, how are you going to take care of him? Uh, I think just be more myself, get back to being patient, taking my time, using my footwork, um, my reactive takedowns. And also still trying to chip away, take away some of the space. Cater's got a really good jab, a really good one-two, and he covers so much distance with it. And he's got a good distance management when people try to close the gap with him. So it's got to be more like me cutting him off, uh, eventually looking for my takedown. And I think, obviously, I think with most people, the keys to victory are going to always be um, grappling. Yeah. I think I striking is always going to be a little bit more even, but I think the grappling is always a little bit more in my favor. Any pressure being on the USC 300? What up, Chris? Nah, he don't. You know, 
I was kind of hoping to have someone who talks a little shit. Kate is a nice dude, man. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to think it's about it. Like, hard to roast the guy who's being nice. Yeah, yeah, I always wanted to fight his teammate, Rob Font, and then that never happened, and then now I'm fighting Cater. I actually trained with him once as an amateur. Oh, really? Like, back in, like, 2010. <laughs> How did it go? I didn't even know who he was. You <laughs> ragged on him. No, no. <laughs> you did. No, you did. No, all right, no, all right. No. That was his origin story. He's coming back to get yeah. you. Yeah, it was like grappling. So it wasn't like a real assessment of fighting. It was yeah, like yeah. grappling. And that's more of my game. But you know you're a lot better grappler than him at this point. I would imagine. So. I would hope so. Come yeah, on, yeah. Al Joe. No, he's a nice guy. Take a little shit. Take a little man. shit. <laughs> all right. I'm a much better grappler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On paper. Yeah. On paper. Yeah. All right. So tell us what's going to happen. UFC 300, you versus Cater. I think you'll see 300. I'm going to submit Calvin Cater in the second round. Second round? Ooh, okay, I'll put my like money it. on it, baby. I'll put my money on Just it, like, too. I'll, I'll, well, now we got this arrangement where you can tell us off camera. If your arm's dislocated before going into the yeah, fight, let Yeah, please let, let us know. <laughs> I'll we'll tell split you, everything. We, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we interviewed Drakus Duplessis uh, right after his brawl with Strickland in the, in the, uh, in the arena yeah. at 296. Then on the night he was going to fight Strickland, I had texted him uh, because I'm an asshole and I feel like I should have. Uh, and I was like, oh, dude, you're going to kill it tonight. I'm not joking. An hour before his fight, he's like, thanks, bro. I'm like, hey, stop texting me, man. You focus on the fight. Yeah, like, but uh, like, we're watching the fight. And he's like texting me. Like, bro, what are stop you doing, bro? Put your phone away. But, dude, Alger, dude, you've been uh, incredibly fun. Uh, really excited. It's, it's tough for me because then it's another guy I don't even want to watch get hit. Dude, you're the man. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Anyone hopefully you want to shout not, out to? Hopefully I'm not getting hit too much. No, nah, yeah. <laughs> just blocking dead. those jabs and those one two. Oh, yeah. Shout out, your, shout out your coach. Shout out your team. Uh, my team, Sarah Longo, Team Extreme Couture. I'm friends with everybody, man. Sometimes it gets w weird. Team Syndicate as well. I train over there. I train Bro, at Bro, it's Planet. like boxing. Your team, Ali's Aljamain. team. I, I train with a lot of people. Yeah. Anyone yeah. that's, you're just on your Anyone own team. Anyone who's willing to help me, I'm willing to help them. Um, Funk Master MMA on all social channels and Funk Harbor Rum is coming soon. We should be in the States April 1st, but pre-orders are being taken right now on funkharborrum.com. I'm super excited to release that. Hell yeah. awesome. If you ever want to roll with a uh, true 240, you let me know. Bro. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching Coaching the Casual. As you man Sterling, make sure to watch this man do some bad things, UFC 300. Thanks for tuning into the Coaching the Casual. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, and share it with your friends. Thanks again.